Wisdom teeth. Long ago, when people ate raw plants and tough meat all the time, wisdom teeth were actually useful. They helped with heavy-duty chewing, back when dinner didn't come soft, cooked, or in a wrapper. Back then, human jaws were bigger, with enough room for all 32 teeth. But as cooking became a thing, and our diets got softer, our jaws got smaller. But nobody told the wisdom teeth. They still show up fashionably late, looking for space that just doesn't exist anymore. Today, around one in five people don't grow all four wisdom teeth at all. And for those who do get them, they often come in crooked, stuck, or crash headfirst into other teeth. Ouch. The upside? Wisdom teeth are on their way out. So if yours never show up, or you skip the dreaded extraction, you might just be one of the lucky ones. The tailbone. Meet the coccyx, aka your tailbone. It's that little bump at the bottom of your spine, and believe it or not, it's the last trace of a tail your ancestors actually used. Once upon a time, humans had tails that helped with balance, climbing trees, and just generally living that four-legged life. But as we started standing tall and walking on two feet, tails became kind of pointless. So they were slowly downsized. What's left now is a tiny stack of bones, usually three to five, that sit quietly at the base of your spine, doing, well, not much. Some scientists think the tailbone still pulls a little weight by anchoring muscles. Others say it's basically just along for the ride. Either way, you won't miss it if it has to go. People who've had theirs removed usually get by just fine. And get this, sometimes babies are born with a teeny tiny tail. It's just an extra long coccyx, not dangerous, and can be easily removed. These days, your tailbone's biggest job might just be reminding you it exists when you fall on it. Third eyelid. Turns out, we almost had a built-in windshield wiper for our eyeballs. Birds, reptiles, and some animals like cats have a super cool third eyelid called the nictitating membrane. It slides sideways across the eye, keeping it clean and moist without messing with their vision. Humans, unfortunately, didn't get that upgrade. But we do have a tiny leftover from it, a little bump in the inner corner of each eye called the plica semilunaris. It doesn't blink or do tricks, but it still helps a bit, mainly with tear drainage and letting your eye move smoothly. If it ever acts up, like causing tear duct blockages, doctors can remove it without much trouble. Goosebumps. You know that weird bumpy skin you get when you're cold or creeped out? That's your body firing off an ancient reflex left over from a much furrier chapter in our history. Long ago, our ancestors had thick body hair. When tiny muscles called erecta pili, attached to the base of each hair follicle, contracted, their hair stood on end. In animals with dense fur, this reaction fluffs up the coat, trapping warm air close to the skin like nature's version of a puffer jacket. Porcupines, cats, and even birds still use this reflex today as part of their defensive display. And in our hairy ancestors, same idea. Puffed up hair meant more warmth and a more threatening appearance. Fast forward a few thousand years and humans have ditched the built-in fur for borrowed animal fashion. Coats, blankets, and heated seats do the job now. But those tiny muscles, still here, just not nearly as useful. No warmth, no intimidation, just bumpy skin. Decorative? Sure. Necessary? Not really. The appendix. In plant-munching animals, the appendix is a digestive rock star, helping break down all that leafy, fibrous goodness. But in humans, not so much. Ours is a tiny pouch sitting where the small and large intestines meet, and it's basically retired from its old job. Once useful for our plant-heavy primate ancestors, but not anymore. Famous paleontologist Alfred Romer once joked that the appendix's biggest contribution is financial support of the surgical profession. Which makes sense, considering nearly 300,000 Americans get theirs removed every year. Some scientists think the appendix might still be useful, maybe helping store good gut bacteria. But here's the thing. You can live just fine without it. So while it might have a minor backup role, it's still more of a health risk than a must-have. The palmaris longus. 
Raise your hand and touch your thumb to your pinky. See that tendon pop up in the middle of your wrist? That's probably your palmaris longus muscle, or maybe not. About 10 to 20% of people don't have one, or have it on just one side. And honestly, they never miss it. This muscle stretches from your upper arm down to your palm, and it technically helps flex your wrist and tense your palm. But here's the kicker. Whether you've got it or not, your wrist works just fine. Scientists think it was more useful back when our ancestors were climbing trees for a living. In those primates, it's bigger and more powerful. But for modern humans who mostly climb stairs and scroll phones, not so crucial. The pyramidalis. Now we're getting into the deep cuts of human anatomy. Tucked away in your lower abs are two tiny, often forgotten muscles called the pyramidalis. They start where your pubic bones meet and stretch upward to a strip of connective tissue running down the middle of your belly called the linea alba. Sounds important, right? Well, it's not. These muscles are kind of like bonus abs, present in some people, completely missing in others, and doing very little either way. Their main job is to help tense the linea alba, but your other abdominal muscles already handle that just fine. So whether you've got both, one, or none at all, it makes no real difference. In fact, about 10 to 20% of people are missing at least one pyramidalis muscle, and most don't even know it. You won't see it in a six-pack, you won't feel it in a crunch, and you definitely won't miss it if it's not there. Its size, shape, and even existence vary depending on the person, and even the population. A leftover part from evolutionary history that just stuck around without causing much trouble. Quiet, harmless, and totally skippable. Auricular muscles. The auricle, or pinna, is the part of your ear that sticks out from your head. You know, the part that holds up your sunglasses? But believe it or not, it wasn't always just a fashion accessory. Back in the day, animals, including our distant ancestors, had tiny muscles attached to their ears that helped them swivel around like built-in radar dishes. Super handy for hearing predators or prey and sneaking up on them. Cats still do this like pros. Humans, though, we've mostly lost that trick. The muscles are still there, but they're more like old, unplugged wires. Scientists think we lost the need for moving ears once we started relying more on turning our heads and using our brains to process sound. A few people can still wiggle their ears, which is fun at parties, but full-on ear pivoting. Yeah, that feature didn't make it to the final version of modern humans.